In this video, we're going to have a go at putting purlins across for our roof. So what we're going to do first on the structure tab, click beam and we want a load family. And what you need to do here is actually select the type of beam that you're going to use as your purlins. So I'm going into structural framing, steel, British standard. Now I'm going to use parallel flange channels. Um, you may decide to use something else. Um, click open. And then you would pick the particular size of beam that you want. And you would just say OK and load that into the project. So I've got that loaded in. Next, back to the structure tab. And this time, click beam system. OK. So what we want here is... Um, First of all, to set our work plane, very important, and we'll pick a plane. OK, now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Now I'm going to make sure I'm on the top of the beam by there. So click that. Now we have to actually do the boundary of our system. So what I'm going to do is um, pick the center line of the beam, pick the apex, and I could skip across a beam there and do one over there as well. And then pick the bottom down here. Use the trim command to just tidy these up. Like so. Then use the beam direction to make sure that it is spanning the correct way. <clears throat> we have beam type by here, and you can select from any of the beams that you've loaded in. So that's important to pick the correct beam. OK, now before we look at the fixed spacings and so forth, I just want to actually bring this so we can see it. All right, so now we can see our beams. All right. We can now have a look at the layout rule and the spacings. So if we've got fixed distance, like I've got selected at the moment, and we then have a specific spacing between each beam, as we can see, it changes like so. Maybe, though, we want a fixed number, and that would change it like that. And then you could just change the number to suit whatever you want. OK, now I'll go back to a fixed distance and make it 1800. Bit too big, perhaps. Um, now, 1500 would be ideal because it actually gives me one at the top and the bottom as well. But I want to show you a different way of doing that. So I'm going to make it, let's say, 1600. And there we go. And now I'll actually add ones at the top and bottom individually in a bit. So what we also may notice is that the purlins are set into the steel. Um, so we need to adjust our Z offset. So what I'm going to be doing is clicking on each of these. Use the control to multi-select them. And then in our geometric position in the properties, the Z offset value, change that to the size of the beam. And there we go. We now have those beams sat on top. The purlins are sat on top of the beams, which is much better. OK, let's just say for a minute that these are the wrong way around. What can we do? Well, when we've got them highlighted, if we right click on them, we can flip structural framing ends and notice how they will flip back and forth. So that's just a handy little trick. All right. Um, let's just do that again. There we go. Flip structural framing ends. All right. Um, next, we may want to create a couple extra ones. So what I'm going to do this time, just highlight the one, right click on it and create similar. Oops, just 
cancel that for a second. Now I've got to draw where I want this extra beam. So I'm going to just stick it up the top by here, get my centre line by there, and just go in a straight line. It'll lock into the correct line angle for you. There we go. And then I'm going to do another one at the bottom. There we go. OK. So we've put some extra ones in. Now we'll notice with a lot of them that they are not quite where we would want them. OK, because you'll see they're not actually sitting on the beams and that's a bit of a problem. So what we're going to do again is highlight all of these. so and then we're going to change the reference so i'm going to go to the south elevation to do this and now i'm going to pick the line that i want them to reference to which is going to be the center of the beam there and notice how they've all jumped across so now if i again select these be these purlins and change the reference and pick the line on that side. They're now in the correct position. And in 3D, we can see that by there. So that's um, our tutorial on putting the purlins onto the roof. It's going to be followed up in our next video with putting connections on these purlins. And I um, hope you stick around for that. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you find the videos helpful.